Okay, so today it's a, it's a perennial question. Uh, we get asked it a lot. Uh, I got asked it three times this week and it reminded me I need to do a little video on it. In fact, there's a little giveaway. If you go to the link, don't, don't go now, you're going to listen to this, but there's a, there's a link in the um, description where I've, I've given away a few things that will help. But listen to this bit first. So the, the, the question is, broadly speaking, how do I renovate, bear in mind, landlord you need in your toolbox to be able to whether it's a new kitchen new bathroom or a whole house renovation how do i renovate on time on budget and uh to quality those three things they're, they're the only three things you can man manage in a in a renovation uh, how do i do it it's a scary position to be in if you can't you know if you have a house that's got a damp problem or a, you know it's got a void and you need five thousand pounds worth of work doing uh, how can you be sure that the builder's not going to rip you off? How can you be sure that that work is going to get done? You need to be able to manage these things. Um, as a landlord, I, I just passionately believe that. If you, if you, if you can't, you need, you need to know the bricks and mortar of it. Um, even if you're not handy yourself, you don't know, you know, your U-bend from your, whatever the opposite of a U-end would be, uh, then you still, the, the, there is a way uh, of, of, of breaking it down into bite-sized chunks that are easily manageable from afar if needed and uh, ensuring the job gets done. So the first thing, um, well the, do you know what the first thing to know is probably, and this is always quite comforting, it might not sound like that, so as, as, a, as a landlord myself I put, and, and as a business we must have done tens of thousands of jobs like this. So we've we're the UK's number one property sourcer and almost every house we've ever sourced needed a renovation. So that's at least 1,200 of those. And then day to day, once we're also a letting agent, once we've got these properties under management, a lot of them need yeah, new kitchens, new bathrooms. So if we added all those up, there's, there's loads, there's loads. So how do we manage it? The first thing I think is comforting to know is there are no magic builders. And that might sound a bit scary, but you know, I haven't got access to any different builders to you Yes, we use the same ones over and over, but a famous phrase in our office is, a good builder can go bad and you've just got to be ready for it. So the first thing is you need a, a process to find the right builder. And it's a, yeah, it's a fairly miserable process, <laughs> um, but it is a process and it, and it does work. Uh, you write up the job and I'll tell you a little bit like, you know, down the line how we do that in this, in this video. You put a brief bullet point description of the job, um, where it is, and you post it in all those places, you know, check a trade, find a rate my builder, all, all those places, Facebook, whatever. And you get, um, let's say you get 20 builders respond. You book them all in for a, an open day, one after the other, no overlapping really, maybe a little bit, so that they, you know, there's some competition, but to give them some good quality time, maybe 20 minutes or so. Uh, in the property and you walk them through the property and out of 20 builders that respond initially 10 might turn up to your appointment five might quote three quotes might be two, two are ridiculous three are doable but one of the two you get the idea that really he's just after the money and he might not turn up on uh, on the tuesday after the monday after you've given him some money or whatever um and you've got to, got to whittle down to a choice of two, maybe one. That's it. Like I say, fairly miserable choice uh, as process, but it works. If uh, after doing that, you don't get a builder, do it again and just keep doing it. So find a builder. That's how you do that. The next thing, and you'd have to have this before you find a new builder, um, but you've got the keys to the house, you're in there and you're writing a schedule of works. Simple as that. You, it's, uh, there's, there's a little bit of an art to it. Um, I always start at the top of the building, just goes back to the days when we had lots of block viewings in the state agency and if you went to the top most people were downstairs and you had a bit more free time. So I always start at the top, I've got a very standard way of doing it, uh, every room, uh, you, you look at all of the woodwork, look at all the plaster work, look at all the glass and, 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 and uh, windows, look at the plumbing, look at the electrics, look at the carpets, look at the decoration. And you go through it in that order and you know what, what needs doing. Do the communal areas, kitchens and bathrooms, obviously the same, but plus sanitary wear and kitchen wear and all those things. And you write around what needs doing. Then there's a, a section for plumbing, gas, 
uh, electrics and all those things. And then there's also an overarching section, which is, this is the spec for everything. So if I've said I needed decorating in rooms one and two, there's a right at the bottom, when we decorate, we decorate in you know, gray walls, white woodwork, whatever it is. And there's your standard specs. So it's all quite readable and easy. And when you meet in the builder on site, you can go through these things and just say, right, these are the jobs, these are the jobs. It always helps if you've got a spec sheet. Appreciate sometimes you can't have that. We have, because we've got previous jobs where we've taken pictures of and this is how we want it. But if you haven't got that, articles, you know, magazine articles, or um, you know, one of the best ones is go into any DIY chain, pick up their kitchen catalog or their bathroom catalog, point to the one on the front and say, I want that. And usually the one on the front or well, at least the one on the double page spread on the inside is the one that they sell the most of because it's the most popular because. Uh, a little top tip, pro tip, if in doubt, the answer's white, always. If you can't choose, it's a white suite, it's a white tile, it's a white wall, it's a white, it, it's white. You can't go wrong, uh, you can always repaint it, but keep it neutral. So, you've got your schedule of works, you've got a spec. The next thing is, assuming now you've got a builder in front of you, coming up with the price and that's where it's a little giveaway that I, uh, uh, I've got for you there. So I've, I've put together, um, if you click on the link, go there, put your details in, it will send you a couple of schedule of works. They're pre-filled in for jobs that we've previously done a long time ago, and that's how you work out your price. Uh, I think there's a video in there that shows you how to do it as well in a bit more detail than I can do today. This is a bit of an overview. overview. Did it quite a long time. Like I said, it's a perennial question that keeps coming up. So go grab that <coughs> and then come back and... Uh, you're going through the building with the with the builder and you should already have done this. So I know that on my schedule of works, I knew I need to rehang that door or paint this wall or do you know, all the work that I need to do. And I know how much I want to pay overall. And I know that it adds up to what I want to pay. So all my list, 50 quid here, 25 pound there, 100 pound there, whatever it is, all adds up to 10,500 pounds. And that's what I want to pay. And as we go through the building with the builder, we're just saying, swing that door, paint it, overhaul the um, the catch, whatever. 125 pounds, yes? Yes. Decorate this room, uh, 250 pounds, is that right? Yes. And you keep going through and you keep getting yeses. And by the time you come to the bottom of it, miraculously, what you want it to be is what it adds up to. And you can all agree that that's a fair price. That's a reasonably simple way of doing it. Like I say, it won't work with every builder. Out of 20, you might get two, but that is the way to do it. Got to be really careful not to agree a too cheap price. It sounds crazy, but some of these builders very easily agree a cheap price. Not the best businessmen in the world, maybe. Uh, and then they'll go pop halfway through, and that's not what you want. So it's got to be a fair price. Don't try and, you know, that method of coming down and getting all the S's can get them to agree to something that they actually can't achieve. So be careful of that. Uh, then you sign them up in a contract. We're very, very careful to always have a contract on every job we do doesn't have to be you know it's not a jct contract or anything it's not a great big huge volume it's just a setting out what he's doing it includes a schedule of works it includes if you've got it the spec sheet it makes it simple and easy to understand that this is the job i want doing puts the price in there it's got to be a fixed price it makes it clear that if there are any extras they need to tell you about them before they charge them uh, and it also agrees what we call a schedule of payments so what we typically do would be to agree the total cost, let's say 10,000 pounds. I'd chop that up into five payments and I'd leave the last one, the last 20%, and it's important that it's 20%, all the way to the end until the entire thing's finished. Um, then throughout the job, you can pay in stage payments. Never pay up front, um, all stage payments. And at the end, when everything's finished, you've still got 20% in hand. So make that really clear. The last 20% is paid when everything's finished and it's all signed off. Uh, the day that it looks finished, you know, stagging hasn't been done, you haven't got the certificates, but generally you're looking around and saying, yep, this is done. That's when you're at 80% and you've still got 20% in hand. Then you can spend a couple of weeks checking certificates, <coughs> checking the snagging, making sure the snagging gets done, building regulations, sign off if needed, whatever, whatever. And then you give them the final amount. And that's how you run a schedule of works. Sounds pretty easy. It can be. Um, there are all sorts of other things you need to check. Like I said, I did that little video. So um, there's a schedule of works giveaway and a video, but it's really important that if you 
are thinking about being a landlord, you understand this, um, at least enough to give somebody else the job. Um, so yeah, go, go check out the link, download yourself your own schedule of works. If you just can't be bothered and you want somebody else to do it, um, we can source, find, fix and rent. Source a property, the whole sourcing package includes finding, fixing and renting a property out. So we're, we're a letting agent. We only buy houses that we want to rent out ourselves. So if you just can't be bothered, uh, don't bother downloading that schedule of works. Just give us a call and uh, we can source you your next buy to let and save you all the hassle. Uh, but for those of you who can be bothered, let us know how you go. How was that useful? Uh, get the download and uh, watch the other videos on how to fill in a schedule of works. Hopefully it'll be useful. Good luck, happy renovating. Bye for now.